All right, hello and welcome back, viewers, to episode 84 of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins. When we last left off, uh, we got into the castle, uh, settled things with uh, Connor, who had been taken over by a demon. Uh, basically, we used Wynn here and uh, this blood mage who helped us out. And uh, basically went in there, took care of the demon. Unfortunately, we, unfortunately, we had to sacrifice our... Eamon's, uh, wife is sold. But, you know, such are the costs of saving people. But so our Eamon is still, you know, asleep like an angel here. And we need to wake him. And apparently the only way to do that is through these ashes of Andraste, which is like a legend. Uh, and the only person who really knows much about that right now is this guy in Denerim. So, we are gonna have to go to Denerim and find out more about that. But first things first, let's talk to Connor. You. You're the one who saved me. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Then, thank you. Father always said to remember to thank people who do nice things for you. You're welcome. Were here. Yeah, yeah. Nobody will tell me how she died. They say I'll find out when I'm older. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Is that all we got from you? I want my mother. I miss her so much. Now get over it, man. So I killed your mother. Whatever. Why are we saving the game? What's over here? Alright, so head down here and... Okay, oh, we're on the second floor. I see. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so we're headed uh, to Danaram. Gotta talk to a uh, Brother Jenna TV. It uh, has been doing work on all that jazz, but before we do that, I think it's about time for another little camping session. Have a couple of chats, because we, we uh, totally forgot about that uh, after the major stuff. Just we're, we're so excited to get to Redcliffe that I completely forgot to go to camp. What's in here? Hello? Take a look at this. Ooh. Perhaps I could have a try. Perhaps you could. Or perhaps you suck. Uh, how's it going, servant? At least working here, we get a roof over our head and the army's protection. If the Thank goodness. What? Oh. Darkspawn come? We'll need it. Okay. Yeah, I forgot we need to sell things, too. Oh, that, that's pretty good, though. We got this far without... Uh... Getting our inventory full. All right, where are we going here? There. Okay, so keep heading forward here. How you doing, Sir Perth? It is good you resolved this demon business. Now we must either revive the Arl or allow Van Tegan to take his place. Oh, is that an option? I, 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 I vote for the Van Tegan option. These people should be thankful for your timely arrival. I know I am. Without you, we surely would have perished. Well, I'm glad you, the one night that I saved, appreciates me so much. Uh, Ben Tegan, what's up with you? You return. Might you have news? Um, no. Then I must resume my duties. The civil war continues, and Loghain is no doubt angered Redcliffe has not been disabled. Good luck, my friend. I hope this continues to go well for all our sakes. I agree. Alright, now I'll be back when I have news, Van Tegan. Which will be soon. Hopefully. Alright, team, let's head out. Well, you know, I think overall we've done more good in Red Cliff than I mean I mean we basically saved you know all the important people, right? Like no one really cares about a soul. Uh, saved all the civilians. That's good, right? I I think we did some good here. All right, let's venture forth into camp. Uh, time to get to know our party members just a little bit better. Let's see. Is there anyone new that we haven't talked? Oh well, we haven't talked to Win yet. Oh, I heard here about we what go. At Redcliffe. I want to talk to you about it. Uh huh. Mm, are you upset because you weren't there? I wish I'd been there, but no. 
I'm not upset about that. You upset because I killed? Lady okay. Sacrifice herself. All right, that With was a dramatic. Magic. How could you do that? That was a dramatic shift. Uh, <laughs> Who? Um. You, you think I should have killed the little boy instead? We could have gone to the Circle of Magi. We we could have tried harder. We should have tried something that didn't involve blood magic. That's for sure. This is the old son we're talking about here. What do you think he'll say when we revive him? Hmm. He'll see the... Where's... Uh, Alistair, I, I, don't, I don't know what I want to tell you here. Uh, he'll see that there were larger things at stake. No, that's right. That's right. That's, I'm convicted. I just convicted. don't know how you could do it. How you could make that decision. I owe the Isle more than this. I honestly did the best I could, Alistair. Oh, wait. Oh, I do like the cunning. So this is about you and him and not me at all. No. Well, maybe. I I don't know. I suppose it's done, isn't it? And it'll have to be enough. Oh, why am I getting on your back about it? You did what you had to. It's just... All this death. I understand, and Alistair. Let's just stop there before I do more than shove my foot in my mouth like an idiot. You do tend to do it a lot. Hmm. Alistair. Come on. What do you need? Let's see if we can talk Ask you away. up some at all. Uh, tell me anything about Such the Grey Wardens. Are. Nope. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Yep, we're done. Fair enough. What do you need? Alright, maybe next time, Alistair. Maybe next time. Oh, and Zevron, too. We got Zevron. We haven't talked to him. First, let's see Dr. Barkers. Your dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. Oh, don't you talk to Dr. Barkers like that. Hmm. Good. He'll fell our enemies with his stench. That may be so. But all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Hmm. He's a warhound, not some pampered and powdered lapdog. I suppose that's true. Uh, just make him sleep over on the other side of the camp. With Alistair. With any luck. I'm not gonna have him sleep with Alistair. I at least have some respect for Dr. Barker's. Alright. Let's see what else is going on with you, Dr. Barker's. Ah, you're so happy all the time. It always lifts my mood. You deserve a pet. Oh, you good boy. You're a good boy. Okay. See you later, Dr. Barkers. All right, Zevron. Let's you and me have a chat. Here I am. Yes, you are. Uh, Want to answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. What is that supposed to mean? All right, so uh, why'd you want to leave the crows exactly? Well, now. I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. Yeah. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? So, be bored? Uh, <laughs> I don't know that I would put it precisely that way. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased, for three sovereigns, I'm told. Which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. The crows buy all their assassins that way, buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder. And if you do poorly in your training, you die. Hmm. And, uh, that sounds pretty bad, but does it work? Of course. You compete against your fellow assassins, and those who survive are rightfully proud of it. Hmm. Okay. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect. It gets you wealth. It gets you women. Women? And men. Men! Or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. I see. So, uh, hmm. uh, you know, I think I understand. As for what I'll do in the future, presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself, for a change. 
far away from Antiva, of course. For now, naturally, I go where you go. Hmm. And, uh, but won't the crows eventually find you? <laughs> eventually can be a very, very long time if one plays one's cards right. Come now, enough chit-chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. All right. What the... What? Come on! What, what, what did I say that you disapproved of? Here I am. <sighs> More questions. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. All right. Do you enjoy being an assassin? And why not? There are many things to enjoy about being a crow in Antiva. You are respected, you are feared, the authorities go out of their way to overlook your trespasses, even the rewards are nothing to turn your nose up at. As for the killing part, well, some people simply need assassinating. Or do you disagree? Hmm. Oh, you never killed an innocent? Now there's an interesting word, innocent. How many men do you know who can claim to be truly innocent? But if you're talking generalities, such as children and relatives and bystanders and such, never on purpose, but it happens. It's unfortunate, but death comes to us all. If not me, then some wasting disease, or a fall down the stairs, or at the hands of a darkspawn. It's all relative in the end. Hmm. Well, that sounds like an excuse. Death happens, as we like to say. And when I get paid for it, death happens more often. <laughs> as far as enjoying the act of killing itself, why not? There is a certain artistry to the deed. The pleasure of sinking your blade into their flesh and knowing that their life is in your hands. Hmm. I guess I know what you mean. There are many things I did not enjoy about being a crow, of course. Having no choice, being treated as an expendable commodity, the rules, oh, so many rules. But simply being an assassin, I like it just fine. I will continue to do it if I can, even if I am not a crow. Honestly, could you picture me doing something else? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, why not? You can do whatever you like. Whereas I am content merely doing what I happen to be good at. It's a talent that not many come by, honestly. I don't see why I need not pursue it. Of course, all these thoughts are moot. Chances are still good that you and I will perish, eaten by darkspawn or slain by the crows at some point. Very gruesomely, I imagine. But hmm. it is pleasant enough to chat about. Come, let's move on while our boots still have some wear in them. You, uh, certainly get to the point with these things, Zebron. All right, let's talk a little bit more. Here I am. Yes, you are. All right, let's see here. All right, more questions. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Uh, tell me a little bit about Antiva. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? Yes, that's why I asked. To truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this for Elden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. Hmm. Don't you want to go back? <sighs> it's not really a matter of wanting to go back. I cannot go. At least not yet. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm from Orzammar, of course. Ah, yes. The city of lava and stone. It too is beautiful, in its way. Sad that it will never see sunlight or smell the salt of the it's ocean. It's got however. its own charms. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. Uh, this I have to hear. I mean the smell. For years I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. 
Hmm. But, wait, that's a little bizarre. There's leather everywhere. Ah, but it's not Antivan leather, is it? I do not know what the Antivan tanners do that is different, but there is no leather more supple nor more fragrant. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in the store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? Hmm. <laughs> uh, your home is still there, Zevran. True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a handsome Grey Warden? A man who then spares my life. I could not. Uh, <laughs> handsome? Hmm. Perhaps that was a poor choice of words. Uh, true, though it is. Do you object? Well, I mean, I am pretty good looking. Uh, not at all. It was just uh, unexpected. And glad I am to hear it. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Okay, Zebra. Hmm. You know, leather boots. Let's just see if that sounds familiar. Uh, don't see any unless... Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. All right, well, we'll keep our eyes out for boots then, Zevron. We'll keep our eyes out for them. All right. Just one more Here chat. This is the last one, I swear. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. All right, so what's your opinion of the Dalish? I know little enough of the Dalish other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. Ooh. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. And there, of course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. All this tale in the book. <laughs> That's awful. Is it? It seemed normal enough a tale growing up. No different than the other elven boys in the whorehouse. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. My first victim, as it were. That's a We were all raised weird by a horse. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. I brought a good price, so I hear. Hmm. And yet you're oddly cheerful about it all. It could have been much worse. Shall I tell you about what happened to the other whorehouse boys who did not fetch a decent price with the crows? Surely your life has not been so idyllic. People like you and I are not the product of happy lives of contentment, after all. Hmm. Yeah, you can say that again. My original point is that my mother's Dalish nature was always a point of fascination for me. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of Dalish make, I knew that much, and beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course as we were not allowed such things. Eventually, they were discovered, and I never saw them again. Hmm, but how do you feel about the Dalish in general? I don't feel anything about them. Oh, we heard about them in the city, even deep in Antiva. I even had the notion once to run off and join them. Naturally, the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy, staring at those gloves. But such is life. Come, enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. All right. There we go. That should make up for that disapproval we got. Fortunately, Alistair's over here still being Mr. Grumpy Pants. Whatever. All right. Well, we'll continue our chats with Liliana, Stan, Wynn, and all that jazz in the next episode. Thank you for joining us, viewers. This has been Let's Play Dragon Age Origins, episode 84, and I will see you next time.